everyone. Uh, this video will pick up uh, just after the second video, which was uh, titled Interfacing with Maps in Arc Pro, where that left off. Uh, if you'll watch that video, you'll see got briefly tripped up in the last step, uh, sharing my map online. And uh, so I wanted to start a new video that focused particularly on that and some trouble you might run into. Uh, so this video is really about sharing and getting your content from your uh, desktop resources to other resources, whether that's a PDF or an Illustrator file, or more importantly, to ArcGIS Online. Because that's the primary value of this software, um, you know, beyond just what I'm sure these videos will soon convey, a, a more user-friendly and intuitive interface. Uh, the other primary benefit of Pro is that it's a direct linkage between your desktop uh, analytics and your ArcGIS Online account. Uh, you know, we reviewed that in the first few videos with this, this idea of the portal here, where you really are able to drag in content from uh, online and, and, and modify it as, as needed. And therefore, if you can drag content in from offline and, you know, uh, engage it, there needs to be an easy way to get it uh, from the desktop, from your local resources to the online. And, um, you know, you do it under the share toolbar at the top. And there's a, you know, a couple ways to share things. So we'll start here in the share as, which is uh, probably the most important in terms of uh, ArcGIS online, um, uh, you, uh, like interfacing. Uh, these are the two that allow you to essentially take this uh, or take your data or take your map and get it to your online account. Uh, layer would essentially create one of these, right? These little yellow icons with the red uh, point in the middle. Those are feature layers. So it would essentially, you know, I'll walk you through it, but we're not going to export one. But it was essentially take what is a... Um, local shape file or a local feature class stored in a geodatabase and configure it so that it can be hosted online. You give it a name and a summary, you tell where you're saving it on your ArcGIS Online account, and you would say whether you're going to share it um, you know, with everyone in the world or just people through your uh, group. You could allow people to edit it, allow it to be syncing, enabling um, exports. And then finally, it shows you, you know, what you'd be doing, right? We'd be creating something that would be called map, and it would be essentially, you know, two different component parts. So anytime somebody drug in map, they would drag in both farmer's markets and then the neighborhood crime population. But the uh, main thing I wanted to show you, and the thing that we got slipped up on briefly last time, was exporting the actual web map. So this would be the equivalent of using Arc Online, if you were on your Arc Online account, and you clicked on the map icon at the top, or the map um, bullet, and it would just take you to a new map. That's essentially what you're doing. You're creating a new map with all associated feature layers being published too, um, except you're essentially just saving it from your desktop and putting it online. So we'd want to give it a name, you know, my map. Um, you know, what is it? Map example for video example. Um, you know, right now I'll keep it pretty uh, pretty close, but you can see it. Uh, this tells me what's coming. There's going to be a map, and, and then these two options that are coming in as well. And, you know, last time, right, if I analyzed, I run into this issue, and it's it's going to keep saying this every time. It says the service layer is a different projection from, from the map's projection. And the issue I was reading up on, the, the challenge there that is something that needs to be remedied, um, you know, that is a little bit different, is you can publish layers till your heart is content. And they don't matter what they're projected in. But if you want to publish a map, you need to make sure that your actual map, right, this thing, the data frame that we used to call, um, you know, in, in desktop. And I also used to call it the universe, right, the actual place that's holding all of your data, whatever you want to call it, that needs to be projected in this coordinate system. And that's simply what um, ArcGIS Online will take for the base map, because you really like creating this whole map with the associated base map. So the layers can be in, in whatever um, coordinate system you need. ArcGIS is obviously going to run that on the fly projection, so it's not going to be an issue. But when you're publishing online, make sure you go here first and you simply select the WGS 1984 
should be right there under those that are available because it's part of your topographic map. It'll be any topographic map you bring in. And just know you'll need to do that whenever you bring your own data into the uh, data frame, or rather whenever you bring your own projected data, right? Because ArcPro, as you'll see in, in some of the next videos, operates the same as desktop in the fact that whatever data you drag in first configures the projection. So just select the, the Mercator, make sure the projection is updated. Um, you know, we understand, so we'll go here and then we will uh, analyze it and then there's no errors and everything's good. And so then you can hit share. Oh, web may already exists. It's a messed up, so my map again. We'll try that. So running its thing, as you can see here, it's publishing the individual layers. It's putting them through the configuration process so that they can be recognized by ArcGIS Online. Um, and then eventually a new map will be created. Um, hopefully this shouldn't take too long here. This is obviously where um, either me stop being lazy and learning some basic video editing skills or possibly getting some hold music that we can play in these kind of situations would be valuable. Um, so I'm just going to kind of give it a quick second and, and let it do its thing. There we go. All right, so it successfully published the map. And we can uh, come on to, you know, our online account. Oops, got to do the other one. Let's sign in. And if I go to map, not what I wanted to do, but at least you see, like, that's what I meant earlier when I said if you go to map. And I'll come in, and there it is. My map, again, published on September 3rd, and I can open it, and I would be looking at the same elements that I'd be looking at on my Pro and on my computer. So, right, again, important, though, to know, this is now the content that's hosted online, but what I'm looking at here is still local, and that's sort of an important distinction to make, right? I can go to the properties of the farmer's market, and I can see that's where this comes from. It's still the shape file. It's still the point. Just because I published it doesn't mean automatically that it's directly a linkage, right? My layers, for example, where are they? Maybe I need to refresh my portal. Might need to, yeah, might need to refresh the portal. I have to look up exactly on how to do. But eventually, this will update itself, and I'll be able to see right, these layers, the farmer's market and the neighborhood prime uh, population as well, but they would be their own web-based layers. They would have nothing to do with what's going on within this map. So again, you're publishing it and then it becomes live uh, online, um, you know, but there's not necessarily a direct linkage anymore. Uh, you know, the other exports to close this video out are, are roughly the same. By going to export map, you would export the same way you did previously to get to Illustrator or PNG. And you know you don't have to do that from your, your view here. As we saw in an earlier video, you could go to um, uh, make a layout right, of whatever size you want. Right, you could, uh, you know, you'd ultimately drag a, a map into that layout Right, you can do this. This one right here. Right, you drag your map into there, so on and so forth. You reconfigure it, and then if you wanted to export it, you could come up here and go to the export in the same way that you would do anything else. Now, one thing to keep in mind is they do not have the A I here. It doesn't actually have the most efficient way to export to Illustrator. You could still do it with SVG uh, and PDF. I think there is an attachment that I've read about that they've developed um, for sort of like a direct export from Pro to Illustrator. Um, so I'll play around with that toolbar in coming weeks and, and maybe have it as one of the last videos here. But just to know you're not crazy if, you, if you're used to AI and you, and you don't see it there a lot. Um, so yeah, right? I mean, those are the basically the same. You'd be exporting 
uh, as you would have before. Make sure you get rid of that because I'm not using it anymore. And then the other things to keep in mind, we're probably going to do a whole video on this towards the end, but is the package. Um, this would be honestly just imagine you're taking everything you've created in a project, all of the different maps, all of the different online linkages, all of the data that's linked locally or online, any tool you create, and throwing it all in one briefcase with all of the linkages packaged so you could send it off to somebody, right? This, consider it what I would share with my teacher, right? If your teacher, you know, you're one of those people that likes to share a map with your teacher, but then the map doesn't have any linkages to any of the shape files, you'd want to uh, create it like this in a package, uh, you know, of the map and the project so that everything can be seen and, and, your, and your person could access that. 